double instant. <laughs> Is that like an instant instant? Yeah! <laughs> Look at that beauty. <laughs> that's, that's a double instant instant win that folks. We are on it. Just to like doubly make sure that we that we've won it, we've like instantly won it. And like doubly doubly instantly won it. Double goldfish. Does it get any better than that folks? Double goldfish. Oh no, I've tangled my rigging everything, I'm that excited. That is double goldfish. Got two minutes left, we're in a tangle. But we don't care because we've double goldfished it. Okay, you lovely lot. So it's my turn for rig of the month. Now, again, Jay's obviously probably been through it before, but with the temperature dropping, uh, micros and expanders, oh my word, are they working well at the minute. In sort of, sort of three foot, something like that, floats have completely changed as well. You know, gone are the, the days where you can use them sort of, you know, sort of like rugby, rugby style floats, you know, with big bulbous bodies on in sort of the shallow water. Them fishes just don't want to be there. And the actual floats themselves are just too positive. The fish would feel the resistance. And you just wouldn't catch them because them pesky F1s would be like, spit the bait out at you. How dare they? So, a little bit more delicacy is what's needed. Float wise, or should we go from hook? I reckon we'll just talk through from the hook, folks. You know what I mean? So, first thing I like to do is set it to around three foot. So get that pole up on there. Set it to three foot and then go and try and find it. Uh, coaching wise, you know, we'll get a lot of, a lot of my customers will ask like, what kind of depths are you looking for? Basically on a slope, so whether it be a cross or down your near side slope, when it's coming to sort of this time of year, so it's going colder, not, not in winter yet by any means, but it is going cold and it's going colder at night times. Fish are still having a munch um, when you get to time of day. It's the depth that you're looking for. Now for me, three foot. Three foot is perfect. Like I'd find two foot unless in the summer, three foot for now, that's what I want. So I've got three foot, because I know I've got three foot, because I've got it on my depth marker kit, folks. You know what I mean? Put it to that and then I'll go and find it. Uh, the actual line in hooks, I've come down a little bit in them, uh, in that I'm on sort of like 0.15 main line now as opposed to my 17 or 0.18 main line that I'll be on in the winter, uh, sorry, in the summer. Uh, whether it makes a difference, I don't know, we talk about it all the time. It, it's just one of them, I suppose, I can't get it out of my head from a natural water background. I like to go lighter diameters, but it, it's the hook length that makes a difference more than anything. But yeah, it's just one of them things. If you think it makes a difference, use it. So I'll always go a little bit lighter. So it's 0.15 main line. And then still on a four inch, but we've got a four inch, pending in, it's pending in. Four inch and it's 0.12 hook length. In the summer, I'll probably be on, well, when it's warmer, should we say, uh, 13 or a 14. And don't get me wrong, you know, chances are you could scale scale up to that. You know, if you're getting some great big wobbly things and that, or you're on a lot of fish, yeah, there's potential there for you to scale up. But I want to keep it a little bit more delicate, so that's why I've come to 0.12. I actually, for the first time last week, went to 0.10, but when the cart rocked up, folks, it was too light. I did get snapped, so it just went heavy and it didn't make a blind bit of difference because there's still, still a fair amount of colour in the water. The fish is still feeding. So, hook-wise, again, personal, but I'll, I pretty much exclusively use 18's hooks. Uh, I'm not using the Kaizans anymore, I'm using uh, the Guru LWGs or SLWGs. Um, I just think they're perfect for this time of year, still fairly strong. I'm not going down to the F1 pellets or black gammas or anything like that yet. But Kaizans, I love Kaizans, but they're my summer hook. You know, I won't be using them this time of year. Uh, not unless I draw pegs like Jamie does, but there we go. Uh, so 18s, LWGs, uh, as I say, 4 inch. And then you can see there, folks, I've got a lovely, you get your in on it, Rich. I've got a lovely spread of uh, number 10s. It's a, is it an eight number 10? Well, depending on how many on there is depending on how heavy the float is. So it's roughly speaking, it's like a four twelves, I suppose. Um, but you can see how, how I've got them spread nice and sort of evenly apart. No more than what we're saying, sort of like half an inch. Basically the deeper the water, the more I'd have them shot spread. But I'm saying three foot, I want it nice and close to the hook. So it's nice and positive. When you're laying that rig in, I'll put the expander on in a second, show you. But when you're laying that rig in, because I'm always going to be fishing this kind of rig on a slope, so 
say we're fishing on the far bank for this, so I'll put my bait in and I want to lay that float in towards me so that that rig is coming against the bank like that. You're getting that fall there, Rich. Oh, he's on it, folks. It's coming into the bank like that and it's just settling. I want it, I want it settled to, well, when I'm plumbing up, just to sort of like the uh, the top of the body of the float, just below the bristle. And then when we grease on, I've got that, what, five or six mil down the bristle. You can... <laughs> You're going to be roughly an inch over depth, but it's not really over depth. You know, you're talking about that, that curve kind of thing. So a fish comes in, sees the bait and nails it, so you get a really quick bite. Uh, you know, little things like shots as opposed to stots, it's so important, folks, and I can't stress it enough. I think I spat everywhere then, I do apologise. I can't stress it enough. When you're fishing with your shots spaced out like this, you, you simply must use uh, shots because... As soon as you start netting fish and you're using stots, I guarantee them stots are going to be all over the place. So if you can imagine that over the course of five hours, every time you net a fish, which in my case isn't much over five hours, because I've not been catching any fish lately, but there we go. But no, joking apart, if you can imagine them stots all over the place, what you've got to do is constantly put them back into position. Because if you don't, you're just not getting the presentation. And, you know, as it does come colder, presentation is absolutely paramount. Presentation and feeding so important all times of year, but even more so this time of year when you know you're not so much scratching around for fish, but every fish is vital. I like that. Every fish is vital, so you want to make sure when you get that bite, you're seeing it nice and quick and you're straight into him. So, shots as opposed to stots, 100%. Next thing we'll go to is the float. Now, I'm not like massive into my bristles like Jay's, you'd be able to tell you just by looking at it that that's like. A 1.5 or 1.7 i don't know folks i know it's not two mil i wouldn't use two mils this time of year but again you know when they start having it i, I don't suppose it matters but it's just one of them it's, it's a confidence thing uh, as well i think that's like a 1.7 perfectly, perfectly acceptable but so is a 1.5 as well uh, carbon stem again so important we, we talk about it all the time it's how your bait's falling through the water so you can imagine a carbon stem, I'm fast on summit Rich, I'm fast on summit, I'm stuck on that. Imagine a carbon stem, as you're laying that in, it's just following your shots down and your bait's coming down nice and natural into the bank. Whereas a wire stem, thump, settled instantly. So I don't want a wire stem still for this time of year. Nice carbon one. And as always folks, obviously I've got my back shots above my float, uh, tip X out white, it's not a bit of fluff I can assure you. Uh, and a nice length of line pole tip to float. Just to, you know, alleviate the wind and all that, we've been through that. Now, feeding-wise, I like to have a little bit of a, of a bigger, bigger pot on when I'm feeding the micros, and that gives me two options. So, if I think the fish, you know, they're not really coming off the bottom and I want to get straight down to them, I'm not going to squeeze it rock hard, that ball. It's going to be like, what, grape size. I'll just give it a little press. So, that'll go in that pot, and I can tap it in, and it can get really accurate. The trouble you'll have if you make that ball rock hard, obviously, the potential is for it to slide down the slope. Obviously, that's not what we want. But by just carefully sneaking that in, that'll just come out of the pot uh, and it'll sit in that little clump. We've got a bit of grass there. It'll just sit in that little clump and imagine your expander over that. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's a bite every time. A little tiny compact area. It's one suck for a carp or an F1 and you're straight in business. Now, if I wanted to attract more fish in, then simply all I'd do, I'd just... I wasn't very accurate then putting them in, was I? I don't want to like completely load that pot up um, because if there's not loads of fish coming to swim and you're feeding too heavy, chances are you're going to feed the fish up too quick. But when you get a few fish in there, um, but you want to draw more fish in, that's when tipping the bait comes into play. Again, I'm not going to tip it from a big height or anything like that. I'm just going to go over to where my marker is, tip it in from no more than sort of eight inches above the water. And as that hits the water, it'll spread out into a bit of a bigger area. But if you can imagine your expander over the top of that, you're getting in on that, Rich? You're on it, mate, yeah. Look at him, he's on it. So imagine your expander over the top of that. Fish comes in, wobbles in like that, nom, 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 nom. Sees that bait, sees the biggest thing there, which is your hook bait. You get that bite straight away and he's on. I just want to quickly and lastly go through how I'd hook the expanders. Loads of different ways. In fact, let me show you the bait. You're getting in on it there, Rich. So all I've done with them, I'm not massive for pumping them anymore whatsoever. Uh, and again, we've been through this technique before. By far the best way with expanders, if you wanted to keep them the same size, is to put them in a little placky bag, tiny bit of water on them, put them in the fridge, forget about them, and then they'll be the same size as what you put them in at. With these, I've not pumped them, I've just literally, as soon as you get to your peg, you know, if you know you're going to be fishing expanders, micros, what have you, 
make sure you put them in a little bit of water and then all you've got to do i suppose it depends on your your hook weight as well because you could hook them and they'd sink the pellet but what i like to do is give them a little squeeze you get any on the squeeze rich you can't see that from there can you just about so I'll, we'll, we'll show you we'll show you in slow mo and zoom after so give it a little bit of squeeze so it sinks and then the grain's running down that way so i'm going to bring it right to the side and that hook is going right the way through the middle of the pellet like that so it sits onto the leads like that fish sucks it in and you're just in business straight away uh, as i say it's just it's, it's a brilliant way of being a little bit more selective fishing marcos and expanders this time of year uh, you're waiting sort of like two or three minutes typically for that for that bite you get that little dink on your float and you're in business and it's usually a carp or an f1 but you know don't get me wrong skimmers uh, love pellets and all this that and the other uh, but as i say it's just a great way of targeting carp and f1s this time of year when it's gone colder but the fish will still have it at some point in the session give it a try folks <laughs>